Yeah. I just think people have a lot of a lot of doubts. They doubt that they. I mean, it it took me a lot to to walk up to somebody and tell them I'm, I'm a Republican or I share those values or I support Trump. That took a lot. You know what I mean? And and to come from where I came from, is is it means so much to me, and it means enough to where I understand. I almost feel like I could change anybody. I was the last one who should have been changed. And if I changed, I feel like anybody could change. Hi, everybody. My name is Kyle and welcome to the channel. And this is The Conservative Take. In this particular interview, we're going to talk to a gentleman by the name of Conservative Guy. And he's got a YouTube channel that is blowing up. We'll talk about that in a second. But if this is your first time here on this channel, and you like what we do here, we take culture, TV, and movies, and filter rights, then please consider hitting that like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. So my wife actually found this gentleman. We were looking for people on YouTube who could be someone we could talk to who had, had an interesting story. And this guy is named The Conservative Guy. He's got a really cool channel. We're gonna bring him on right now. And here he is. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good, Kyle. How are you? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing excellent. It's a Friday. Uh, when you guys see this, it'll probably be a different time during the week, but this is taping on a Friday. <laughs> so how's your week been going? My week's been smooth, you know, keeping my mind, you know, to the streets, hearing out, you know, what was going on and all that, just trying to stay in tune and informing the people. Yeah, that's something that I like to do, too. And I, I like to bring different um, people on. I've had two people who were from the Lexit side of it, who are obviously Latino, Hispanic. But so I'm in, I like the, the the differences between the walk away movement and people who basically at some point in time took the red pill and now they're looking at life differently. So to me, I was I was on a YouTube channel earlier this week and just trying to find some some context of how you walked away. Or did you always have that mindset of conservatism or did you just come on it late late or how did that work for you? Nah, no, 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 no conservative values were incorporated in, in any of my ways of thinking when I was actually growing up. And this whole conservative movement has been something new for me that I actually moved over to after encountering my, my brother and he kind of put me on to everything that I needed to know. So what he did and to kind of get it all rolling is he would send me one or two videos. And um, just from there, I would you know watch the videos and kind of try to add up and make sense of everything that it was talking about, but I couldn't really make much sense out of just one video. It actually took a combination of multiple videos. And after I seen them again and again and again, it started to help me adjust to, to what I needed to do, which was to start thinking for myself. And when I started thinking for myself, I started asking my brother, it, it's kind of crazy how it all unfolded because I asked him, who should I look up to see more of these conservative guys? And he said, he was like, bro, you just got to find them. You know, you really just got to go out. You got to search. You got to look and look and you might find some that I don't know about. And he said, I could start you out with a few heads. You know, he shot me out videos by Tatum. He let me know who Candace Owens was and all that stuff. And even at that time, I still wasn't knee deep in how deep I am today. And that's mainly because I, I didn't get hit with the right topic. Now, for me, the right topic was actually exposing that the Democrats were part of the whole KKK and the plantation deal. When I heard that, for me, being so misled for so many years, was it kind of just threw me over the edge. You know what I mean? I said, I said to myself, you know, the fact that y'all lied to me about this, what I felt very strong heartedly about, that was just the smack in the face. You know what I mean? So. After they smacked me in the face with that one, that's when I kind of turned my back to the Democratic Party. And I was like, what else is out there? What's next? What else have they lied to me about? And that's when I started my searching. I started digging and digging. And then I came up on these different channels, you know, throughout YouTube, which started to express different sides and opinions and aspects and angles that we all could consider in helping building our values on the conservative side of things. And what I noticed is me, myself, always had a different angle. So I would watch Tatum, I would see Candace, I would see different other people out there. And I would always have an angle that I felt needed to be put forth to the people and exposed and let out. 
And that's what caused me to go ahead and start the channel. You know, the, the real walk away movement itself stemmed from my brother shooting me these videos. Over time, it slowly worked on me until that whole KKK deal came up. Once that happened, I decided to kind of shoot out videos myself. And particularly for the simple fact that I saw a lot of black people not on the higher end, on the conservative side. So I thought me coming out and bringing my angles and opinions would kind of help bring the people up, you know, from from the bottom and kind of bring them up to the top. Yeah, yeah, you said a lot there. And I almost seemed like, I, I know I said earlier that I didn't want to talk, people don't want to hear me, but <laughs> I kind of want to jump in. <laughs> but really, my story is is your story, right? I mean, the KKK deal, that was kind of, that was kind of the deal breaker, mm -hmm. right? No. I mean, it's like, so let me ask you this question. Your brother, is he your older brother or how, what's his walkaway story? I mean, just get to that because he's obviously a big influence in your life. So yes to that. And, and you know, thank you for asking because I actually, I was chopping it up with him yesterday and I was like, look, bro, you need to make a channel, man. You need to make a channel because the craziest part about it is my values happen to be the same as his, but we still come at it from different angles. And that's why I feel his angle is still not being heard. If you hear some of the things that my brother would come up with about things that are going on politically, it just will blow your mind because I, you know, I keep my ears to the streets and what Tatum is talking and ABL is talking and they all come from cool angles. They deliver a lot of facts and details and all that good stuff, but there's still ways that you could expose the people in order to help them to think, you know what I mean? It's going to yes. come from a different way from, different people in order to help other people absorb the information. I, I love it. I love it. I, I would love to see your brother uh, do something because it sounds like he is in, intense. <laughs> that he um, obviously he's <laughs> obviously he's smart and he's he's and he's patient because he gave you enough just to something to nibble on. And something we talked about in my interview with the director of Uncle Tom about basically you start with something like a king face and you can jump to a, 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 a brand and Tatum. You can go to a Candace and then you go to a Larry Elder and then you go to Walter Williams and you go to a Thomas Sowell. It's almost like it's a progression. You can't. And like you said earlier in your first statement, it's like it did, one video didn't do it for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that that was cool. And also I watched some of your videos and you use the word angle a lot. And I like that because some people will use different things. They'll say they'll say, well, they'll say if you're really technical, they'll say anecdotal evidence or some will say, well, my truth. And you're saying angle, and basically to me, it's just perspective, and it's mm -hmm. and it's and it's something where we all can come together, but it's all a common thread all along. Where some at some point we feel we've been lied to, and now we're going hardcore to either we're angry because of what we were told to, or we just want to find out what's more out there that we hadn't been told about. Yeah, 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 and I mean, that's that's the best way to look at it, because again, I think. In order for people to absorb and obtain the information, it's going to have to come from different sides. And I can tell you, nobody could have changed me except for my brother because I looked up to him. And you, I think you asked earlier, it's my older brother. So if you were to ask me, I wasn't supposed to be a conservative. If you look at my how my life unfolded, I happen to be the last child. You know, when you're the last child, you get a lot of, you know, you might you could call it handouts, but, you know, I got a lot of clothes just for the simple fact that I have four other brothers that already ran through their jeans, T-shirts and button ups. And he handed them all down to me. You know, I've always gotten things along the easier side because I was the baby of the family. So you would have expected for me to always look for those handouts constantly time after time. And that's how I actually was once upon a time when I was on what I call the blue team. Um, I definitely looked for the handouts. I mean, I went out every day. I even once upon a time, I asked my mom about welfare. I didn't actually end up on it, but I, I inquired about it. I was like, you know, what is that all about? How does it work? How would it work if I actually got a job? And if I have a job, do I still get it? You know, this is at a younger age that I'm thinking about this stuff. And being on the conservative side, those things would never come to mind. They would never come to mind because you always want to do for yourself. You always think independently, operate independently. And that's more along the lines that you, you focus on. Everything without handouts is the direction that you go in. So I'm just saying that on my, on my liberal side of things, when I was thinking like that, I, I looked for handouts. If anybody were to ask how I ended up becoming a conservative, 
it blows my mind. You know what I mean? Just because I, I was one of those that really wasn't expected to, to go down that route. And I talk a lot about my life and my videos and things that I've gone through, you know, a little different than like King Face. I think King Face comes from more of a, a gang type of background. So that might entail, you know, more violence than probably what I've experienced. I come from more of a drug type of background. You know, I sold drugs for many years. And yes, that does entail violence, but it does it wasn't that on a day-to-day -day thing. For me, on a day-to-day -day basis, what I would encounter is more of the police type of thing. You know, actually riding with, you know, riding dirty, feeling my heart beating as I watch cops and stuff like that. And it just is so crazy to me nowadays, being a conservative, I don't feel like that. I ride and I'm cool. My heart doesn't skip a beat when they get behind me. I got my papers, I'm all good, my license, yeah. everything is in line. So that's a good feeling. That's part of the, the walk away movement that I try to push on other black people is like, look, that, that feeling that y'all have is it doesn't feel good. When you're at e not at ease at that position, that's stress. That's a form of stress. When your fear begins to heighten to those degrees and your heart's racing, that's another form of stress. That's something you don't need. You could diminish that and make better choices throughout life if you just have your things in line and focus and operate accordingly. You know, it's, it's simple. It's simple. Uh, that last statement is the most profound statement that I've heard in a long time. And I think if you bottle that last statement up right there, you can make a lot of people, um, you can make a lot of uh, difference in this country because what you're saying is you're basically providing a product almost. And I don't want to put it in a, in a frame of, a, of, a, of commerce, but really what, you, what you've just done there was you're saying that conservatism, if it's packaged correctly inside a person, it can lead to them living longer, being happier, healthier, and being free. Because a lot of times we say, well, we be, we be free. That's what Blexit has, we be free. But no one's ever really said, what does that mean? I think what you just said right there, from a practical standpoint, what that means. And I feel that. And so I, I really appreciate you saying that. And I would love to maybe spend another video or maybe whatever. Maybe you can do one just unpacking that. I think there's a lot there to be had and to be very beneficial to people who felt like we did back in the, in the path when the when Popo got behind you. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So let me um, so let me let me go into this question here. I want to kind of talk about your, your YouTube channel, because obviously you started this channel after, I guess, the red pill moment. Your brother look, looked after you and was patient with you. You did your first video. Let me ask you, before I get to your YouTube channel and that aspect of it, what was your first YouTube channel experience? Like when you first posted your first video, what's your anxiety posting that first, <laughs> putting that up there? Or what's your thoughts on that? Because for me, it definitely was there. So, I, so I, I've been on YouTube for many years, just from a different angle. I've never actually put myself out, you know, my ways of thinking, my beliefs, my values. I've never put that out. I've done fitness, you know, I've done fitness channels here and there. So I had a little bit of experience with actually um, releasing videos and stuff like that. And, you know, I think my success happened to be a blessing. And I say that because when I did it, I've come from a background where I've done a YouTube channel. I've successfully gained a little bit of subscribers, some views, nothing in the area to where I could actually make money. But what I did notice and get comfortable with is being in front of the camera. So before I started my channel, what I said to myself, I said, look, I need to get into this from one particular angle. Is that word again? I said, I need to make sure that I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this for the money. I'm not doing it. I'm not even doing this for the views. I'm not doing this for nothing. I'm doing this because if somebody happens to find me and I could change them the way my brother changed me, that's my, that's my MO. That's my main objective. So when I would put out my first videos, I wasn't, I think Brandon's story is a little different. I think he had a little bit more success earlier on in his career, whereas myself, I was grinding for a good minute before I really started seeing my numbers starting to pick up. So in the beginning, I definitely, I used to shoot out videos and I would get like maybe two views. So maybe three views maybe four, four views, and I used to just do it. I used to go hard with it. If you look at the beginning points of my videos and how I used to go out, there's a particular video, you'll see me, see me in a full piece suit, and that's the suit that I used to wear at work. So what I did, I remember that day, I went out, told my boss, I said, I gotta run out to my car and shoot this video real quick. She was like, video? What do you mean video? I was like, it's gotta go do something real quick, you know, and I, I'm gonna be right back. And I went out there, you know, I did my thing, and I never really knew where it would ever end up. 
and I constantly just worked at it and worked at it. I would see wifey, wifey would be like, oh, you know, you're doing those videos again? I'd be like, yeah, I'm doing the videos again. And she would see me doing these videos. And then over time, I slowly started to generate some numbers. And numbers to me at that time was seeing maybe one view an hour. So I would break off for like 24 views in a day. And that would make me really happy because I thought that I was actually changing somebody's life. Yeah. And over time, some people know how I unfolded into the success that I'm you know, in right now, which was um, I made a, a video where I felt that I was speaking truth and what needed to be told. I made a video about Brandon and I made a video about Lucas. And between the, the, the two, um, I ended up taking off for whatever reason, people felt the need to lean on my side because they felt that I was telling the truth. I thought I was as well. It is what it is. What ended up happening is people started to subscribe to my channel um, and then from there, what I believe also excelled my progress is Tatum actually decided to um, take my video and share it on his page. And I remember I went to sleep. Yeah, it was real. It was a lot of love from Tatum Zan. I definitely, you know, I got to give it to him. So I remember that night, you know, I would gain maybe three subscribers a week. So I remember I went to sleep that night. Kyle, it's the craziest thing. I, I could not believe it. I woke up. So I released that video, I shot it out. So it was probably like 10, 11, 12 hours old. And um, I guess Tatum happened to run into it because he subscribed to my channel from way back. I did some um, a clothing haul, an unboxing on his clothing. So he subscribed to my channel from way back. We was kind of in touch just a little bit. But when he happened to see this video, he thought it was so moving and so much truth to it, he decided to put it out. Now, anybody could say whatever they want to say, but when we ask, is that video telling the truth? Just look at the likes and look at the dislikes. And I think that tells all. If you look at the likes and you look at the dislike ratio and the comments and things that are being said, you can really see the direction that I was pushing the video in. It, it, it was only truth that was being told. I didn't try and destroy anyone's career or anything like that. I just put it out. So from there, you know, Tatum put me on. I went to sleep. Next morning, I woke up. Kyle, bro, I had two. I went from 400 subscribers 428 i think the numbers were and i used to sit at the same number for a minute thinking yep. youtube was messing yep. with my numbers yep. i went to sleep i woke up the next morning i was sitting on like 2800 wow. 2800 i went from wow. 400 followers i went to sleep i woke up and seen 2800 and then from then it just kept climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing and now i'm sitting on um 22, 22K, yep. something like that, a little more. Yep. And just to see the success climb up so fast, for me, I really started to wonder because I'll tell you something about my videos. So what my brother kept telling me about my videos is he was like, what can you do in your videos to get your videos to apply to the kids? We want to hit the younger crowd. That was the whole thing. We understood that. The conservatives, we kind of knew conservatives to have or be within a certain age range, right? They usually dominate. Even when I look at my YouTube audience retention, I check the age range. I'm not really hitting anybody between 18 and 24 years old for whatever reason. Maybe they're off doing something else. So what I looked to do in my channel was to incorporate whatever was necessary in order to pull in that audience because I already had my hands around the age ranges above that. I look to get 18 to 24. This is where I incorporated the music. So the music for me was this. This is how I looked at it. So when I do my politics, I always find myself going back to music. You know, I listen to a Brandon Tatum video, I slide over to a little hip hop track. Then I slide back over to ABL video, I slide back over to a hip hop track. All day in the car, I flip flop back and forth. So as I built my channel, what I started to say to myself is I said, look, we need to mix politics and music. Yep. So I put them together. And that's where when you check out my videos, my aim, one, I, I try to sound as different as I possibly can. That's part of why I use the, the beats for my brother. But I tried to make it so that it's almost like a song. You know, that's why I use a lot of different beats, different times. It's almost like a song to me. So every video that you click on, I like for you to be moved musically and for you to be moved mentally. That's my deal when I when I released wow. my projects and that was my aim and my focus and how I decided to really push the channel. Wow. And it ended up blowing up. I get a lot of comments on the music. I get a lot of comments. If 
if I happen to not use music, I get a lot of people asking me, where's the music at? Conservative, where the music at? Where the music at? So that's a good feeling, you know, because a lot of that music is coming from my brother's angle. And for many, many years, he's never really seen any love wow. from the left. You know what I mean? And you know, the left is where the music's at. Usually most in the industry is associated with that liberal side of things. And that's where I was like, yo, look, bro, you got to come over here to the side. They showing a lot of love. They really giving whatever you putting out the time of day, you know, they critiquing it. And that's what he needs. Whereas we know on the left side, you know, if it ain't my boy that did the track, I don't even want to hear it. That's usually how they go. I mean, you know how it is. It has to be somebody that they know in order to really check out the content and really hear out what anybody's saying or producing. Wow, that's, that's, that, that is incredible on so many different levels. I mean, I didn't realize, well, let me just first say this. And I'm not going to get into analytics. I'm a big nerdy guy like you are. I watched the video with you and about uh, Tatum and um, uh, Amazing Lucas. I won't get into that because that's going to be a whole divisive thing. But in that video, you talked a lot about analytics. And what you talked about, and for those of you guys, I'm kind of going off script here a little bit, guys. If you're watching this video and you're, and you're a fan of either one of us, probably more so of a conservative guy because he's like 10 times the size of my channel. However, y'all go follow Kyle. Y'all go follow Kyle. Well, I, 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 but my point is, my point is this: you got to work, man. You got to put. I've been doing this for a year. All right, you've been doing this since 2016. Looks like you got to push, guys. You got to push, hey, push, hold, push. Hold on, Kyle. I actually only got so my channel was created in 2016, but I only okay. got the conservative side of it running as of I want to say like nine months ago. Okay. Okay. Well, let me say this then: your channel went from. I have analytics on my side too. I says. 462,000 views in 30 days. Let me say this again. You're close to you're close to a million views. We just hit 100,000 like three weeks ago. You're about to hit a million views in about a couple of weeks. <laughs> you hit 462,000 views in 30 days. I think, you know what, Kyle, I think it's the, I think it's the street side that I'm bringing to the, to the table. So I'll tell you one of, one of the comments that I get probably on a day-to-day -day basis. One, they ask me about the hat. And then two, <laughs> they, always, um, they always tell me, you know, it's kind of like when, you, when you're looking at it, it's almost like they ask, you know, what, did it, what got me here and how did I decide to push the truth out in the way that I'm doing it? So this is what it is. So I'll tell you right now, you know, when I talk in my videos, you know, I talk my slang or whatever, I, you know, I use this, that, and the third. I use a lot of known yep. saying. Yep. I yep. Always, and even in one of my videos, I brought it out to the people. I said, look, I need y'all to know and understand. Like, when I'm chopping it up with my peoples, when I'm in the streets, when I'm with my boys, yes, this is how I engage in conversation. This is how I carry myself. This is really me. Now, my field of work, what I deal in is five-star hotels, five-star properties, anything related to a higher class of people that are dishing out a lot of money, usually you got to clean up your speech, you know? So I've learned and built up the skills in order to carry myself professionally in any environment, anywhere out accordingly, whenever I need, you know? And I think that's key in, in talking to the people and, and making things happen. I think you mentioned this in the interview with, I, I want to say the last name is Malone, Justin Malone. The guy from yes. um, Uncle Tom, what you mentioned was you talked about how Kingface can actually really talk to the streets. Like, and the reason why he could talk to the streets is because he's speaking their language. So that's the same thing with me. So when, as I grew up, this is how I started. You know what I mean? This is what I came up saying, talking like, and everything. And then over time, in my household, and you'll all also hear this in my videos, I don't curse. The reason why I don't curse is because... I never cursed in my household, very similar to ADL. I never cursed in my household. My mom raised us just like that, you know? My mom also never let us speak incorrect English to her. We, we could chop it up with my boys and talk all that, you know, N-word this, N-word that, and this and that, whatever we, however we wanted to articulate our, our, our verbs and pronouns, she let us go. But when I had to talk to mom Dukes, you had to clean it up. You had to use all of your pronouns. Everything had to be in line. And that's where whenever that time comes, because, of course, at some point in time, I would look to be a public speaker where I could shoot all this information out to a massive amount of people. I would like to be brought on 
without any doubt that they're going to have any issues with how I articulate things, or how I talk, any slang that I say. I need them to understand that that's in order to really talk and deliver the message to the people. But at the same time, at any point in time, if we even ever need to get professional, we can make that happen. You know what I mean? And that's that's good to know because when it comes down to receiving this message and getting it to apply to that, that crowd I talked about between 18 and 24, that's only going to happen when you speak in that language. You know what I mean? They want to hear what they boys say. You know, you can't you can't come off using certain slang terminology that maybe they don't even understand. You got to talk to them the way that they talk to you. So it's not a real or fake thing. If you ever see me, you know, let's say I'm on Fox five and I'm talking on a more professional uh, state of mind. You can, you can never say it's a real or fake thing. It's, it's purely like how you got to deliver. And when you're talking to the people, you got to talk to them how they want to hear it. And then, you know, when the time comes, when you need to be taking everything at a more professional level, and so be it. That's how you, that's how you do it. I think that's where the level of success is coming in from. Is I'm talking to the people exactly how they want to hear it. That's it. And it's that's, really. And that's exactly how we are as, as as a culture. I mean, and we, we we I talk a lot about about negative black culture, but there's a, a most of it is positive, and most of it's just a social culture where we like to hang out, kick it, you know. And that's just how we are. And that's that's the fun part about being black. I would never change anything about that. But there's a stigma against it if you go to that the thug side. And so, like you, I don't, I don't, I don't cuss on this channel at all because my mom could be watching, my pastor could be watching. You know, I don't, I don't want to see in, in ten years my, you know, my kids looking at my grandkids looking. Well, look at that dude said. So, but that, each his own though. I mean, but you can, like you said, you can still, you can still engage without the profanity. You know, you can still engage in a way stylistically and kicking it wise so that you're hitting at eighteen to twenty. Five demographic, which I'm not hitting. I'm hitting them 35 to 60. <laughs> That's who I'm hitting. So I would love to be able to do that. But each channel has its own flavor, has its own target audience. And again, going into Google Analytics and YouTube Analytics, it goes into how that works. And I can. That's a whole other topic altogether. But I'm glad you found your niche. I think you're going. Well, obviously, you're going places. So I'm excited for you. I'm, I'm proud that you're able to do that and and working hard and grinding, man, and not giving up. That's the big thing. Not giving up. So regarding like Candace Owens, one thing about her and one thing that influenced me on this channel was her statement saying that we need to get involved in the culture. And that's one thing I did in this channel where I want to take culture TV and movies filtering it right because I was just upset because my Star Wars and my Star Trek and was being <laughs> was being ruined. And I, I didn't like what I was seeing in the storytelling. It didn't make any sense. And so I did a video on Captain Marvel and that just took off, went, went, went crazy. And that's how it kind of got started. I had done a walk away video prior to that, but that was kind of how it is. And each channel has to have its own niche and so forth. So, but let me ask you this question, um, conservative guy. Let me ask you this. In terms of the black community, what do you think right now, if you could name them, what's the top three issues, if you could fix today or, or just identify, that we have in the black community that is the most problematic? Um... Fathers in the home, uh, respect for police, and the music. Those three. Just okay. simple, fathers in the home. I mean, working on the family structure, the music, and respect for the police, respect for that high authority. I mean, th there is no respect for any of that high authority. And that's where, I mean, that's where it begins. And then, you know, it starts also from the home and stuff like that. And I did, in one of my videos, talk about my story where I grew up in a single parent home. And that also connects to my reaction video on Uncle Tom. Some people seen it, some people didn't. I love the movie, everything was good. I mean, they hit it on point from A to Z. The one thing that I said in my video, which I still feel strongly about, is they didn't really elaborate on black guys who turned conservative who grew up in the single parent home. And that's also one of the things that, you know, when you, when I told you a little earlier, you know, I, I really felt like I wasn't all the way destined to be a conservative, but I ended up being that, you know, God's will, he ended, put me in that position. I never seen it coming, but things like that, you know, growing up, you know, without the dad around and stuff like that. And I put it out there that my dad was cool. I mean, I can hit him up right now and he'll chop it up with me and he'll even come over and kick it if we were in the same state. But the way that we grew up, 
it ended up being a situation where he happened to spend most of his time in another household, which left my mom doing more of those 16 hour shifts. Not only did she hit up the 16 hour shifts, she started doing the overnights. And when she hit up them overnights, Kyle, whoa, it was a wrap. You know what I mean? I think we yeah. was like, you know, my brothers were close in age. I got four brothers. And then the next two up, they're actually um, two years apart. One is two years apart and then the next one up will be four years apart. So my mom, once upon a time, was going and working an overnight shift and leaving all of us to really do whatever we want. And then that's where I talk about a lot of that in my videos, where I slowly dived into the drug game. And that stemmed from my older brother. And then he, he trickled all that information and stuff that he did into my other brother. And then it trickled right down into me. All three of us had somewhat of some issues in school, stuff like that. A lot of what the statistics show is what I lived. And I really felt, again, I don't know how I ended up a conservative, but when you look at my lifestyle and things that I've gone through and how I t at times thought for myself, I have a lot of situations in my videos and stories. That's what led me to be who I am today. So I think in general, I'm a very powerful conservative outside of many others who grew up in different situations who may have had the chances a lot higher on being a successful conservative. Whereas mine, like I said, a single parent home and many, many handouts. You know, my mom was on, you know, the whole welfare deal. We were in Brooklyn, New York, you know, stuff like that. It, it, it all had a reflection on who I was every day when I walk out. Oh, I, I seen the racism. When I was on the liberal side, I think, oh, I seen it. I seen it every day. I talked about it in one of my videos where I went to a job site and a guy was terminated and I failed to realize that this gentleman, oh, I'm sorry. I went to a, a job site and I was terminated and I failed to realize because the whole racism deal just sort of covered my eyes entirely. I failed to realize that that particular gentleman had a college degree. He had a lot more credentials behind you know, what, what he was doing, which made him a better fit for the job. And for me, all I could see was a simple fact that you chop the black man down and you put a white man in position and that destroyed me. And I've seen those things constantly throughout my life. And when I changed and turned conservative, it, it, it was, it was so easy to see the simple details and made it all make sense, you know? And that's the biggest thing. That's why I do what I do. That's why I make these videos is to push this message because again many people might feel like man i would never be a republican i would never that's that's what i thought and i'm here today pushing the message out to all the people letting them know you can make this happen single parent home drug game whatever you want that's where i was at i was doing it i've been locked up you know i was out doing whatever i wanted to do when i was out there doing my thing i think the craziest time in my life was when i was in an apartment by myself and i was growing weed and selling weed in the same home. I mean, this is a big, big, big no-no when you're in the game. You don't set up your supply where you're actually pushing out your work. Because if somebody comes in just to rob you for your work, they're also going to get supply as well. You know, simple facts. But I was that knee deep. I wanted the money so bad. And in my mind, there was no other way. And that's where a lot of black people fail is they seem to think that this is it. We either playing ball we out here grinding, hustling, or we just trying to make it day to day and work off street cred. You know, some people think that's more valuable than money. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that's fantastic. I, um, I, I, I see two things out of there. One thing was about, he talked about, well, earlier on, but I'm kind of kind of trying to take what you said at the earlier part of this interview and bring into what you just said now is that you almost said something about an entitlement mentality almost. In fact, that you were, when you were a liberal and when I was liberal in a lot of ways, were looking for the handouts, looking for the, the assistance because it was expected. And that's a whole sermon in and of itself <laughs> on why that is there. And so, but then you said, as you became conservative, all of a sudden you could start to see that. And then the situation happened when uh, you went on job site and they put someone else in, their, in your place but he had a degree and other things too. You saw only the race side of it, but as a conservative, you now see that there's a other side of it too as well in terms of him being actually qualified. Um, I thought that was excellent. And, but lastly, to the last point is the grinding part, right? Is that 
you know, whether, whether we're out here on the street, we're, we're selling drugs or we're, you know, playing basketball to get to the NBA, we're grinding. You know how hard it is to get to the NBA, but these kids are working. Like I know, I know some kids that are just doing stuff I could, couldn't do. I was seven years old. They're at five years old because they want to get there. And, and people who are enterprising, you know, like you said, doing it inside of your apartment, you were enterprising. You were, <laughs> you were like, you know what I'm saying? You were doing a business a function. It just happened to be illegal. And so it's just a matter. And my whole point in all saying all this is, is that once you had that mentality of, okay, that this is about opportunity, this is about real qualifications, it's, it's only a simple matter of shifting the focus from this side mm -hmm. to that side and doing the exact same thing. Right? I mean, it's, I mean, that's how I saw it because yeah. if you look at someone like Malcolm X, or you look at someone where he was focusing all on one side of uh, negativity, but he did the same thing on the other side, just in a different direction for, uh, well, when he acted when came back from Mecca, of course, but, but just to me, it just seems like it's just a matter of focus and shifting people's worldview and perspective and letting them know that they can uh, accomplish something and they're not victims. Is that, is that a fair analogy or did I just kind of go it's off perfect. it? Perfect. It's perfect. No, that's it. That's it. You know, that's it all in a nutshell. You know, I just I, think, I mean, yeah, yeah. I just think people have a lot of, a lot of doubts. They doubt that they, I mean, it, it took me a lot. To, to walk up to somebody and tell them I'm, I'm a Republican or I share those values or I support Trump, that took a lot, you know what I mean? And and to come from where I came from, it's, it's, it means so much to me and it means enough to where I understand, I almost feel like I could change anybody. I was the last one who should have been changed and if I changed, I feel like anybody could change. And that's why, that's why I do my videos, that's why I push the message. That's why I put the music. I try to make it comfortable. I want people to get engaged. I try to create these stories. If you ever watch most of, a lot of my videos, I always try to bring in an actual outside experience that I can share with the people so they can, it can help them gravitate to what I'm trying to explain. And usually when I share my real life experiences, that's usually the videos I get the most likes on, the most hits, and that's what people feel. You know, internally, they want to know about who's gone through those experiences similar to what we just talked about with the guy at my job and, you know, gaining the position and then letting me go and stuff like that. It's really, you know, it's in the person. It's really in the person in the way of thinking. And I think that's the biggest thing is changing your way of thinking. And you're only going to see success once you begin to think on your own. I'm battling my cousin right now. And we, we going back and forth. He's 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 big on the, the blue team and I'm big on the red team. And it's only so much information that I could shoot back and forth with him yeah. before, you know, I really have to just throw up my hands. I'm like, look, bro, I'm going to drop all the knowledge and facts I possibly can on you. It's up to you to now read it. you got to take the initiative. you got to start moving and thinking for yourself. And that's the biggest thing is sometimes people don't want to make that step. They don't want to make that jump. And. I don't know if the decision is to just leave those people and let them go or do we continuously pursue and work at them and work at them because I've worked at some people and it hasn't been much hope. I mean, even today, it's been probably a year now. I've worked on people shooting in videos and different things like that, particularly with my homeboys, black, you know, and they are the hardest ones to convince that, you know, Obama may not have been the best fit, you know, Trump. It's probably the direction you want to go, stuff like that. That message is so hard for the black community to absorb, soak in, and feel confident about. That's the whole thing. A lot of us may not feel all the way confident. And then if we are supporting Trump, we go hide in the shell, which is the worst thing you could do. And I like the fact that I have the name that I have because when I wear my shirts anywhere throughout public, it says exactly what I am on the shirt. So I represent, you know what I mean? I like to go out and make other conservatives feel good. Like, man, look at conservative over there. Look at conservative over there. That's always a good feeling because we all know how we feel when we see Trump supporters with the Trump hat or anything like that. You want to almost run them down. Like, hey, hey, hey. what's up, man? Much love. Right. Much love. Trump right. supporters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't even know where to begin on that. It's a little bit, uh, I would say it's depressing, but it is, it is a little bit discouraging. But you know, we only have to we only have to bring a few along for it to really um, have a, a trickle wave. And I think nice. Ken Owens, Ken Owens had an interview with I think it was Kingface, I believe. And I believe she alluded to the fact that you know she was almost to the point where at some point you got to put your hands up. You know, 
And Thomas Sowell, the same way. I mean, he was like, look, come on, if you don't get it now, you know. And to your point, it's like, you know, I don't know what there is we can do other than live the life and, and show people by example. And I just, I just pray that they can put a few things together, find a story of the hundreds of thousands of walked away stories out there we can put in front of them. I saw a walked away story of a satanic lesbian, um, uh, I mean, who's now a Trump supporter, you know what I mean? You know, um, I, I put a video up, I put a video up about a knitting community, you know, people who sew, and uh, they were, this, 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 this lady, I think her name is uh, Kate, I, I remember her name, I was, I, I'll butcher her name. But anyway, she became a Trump supporter because she got blasted in her own knitting community of cancer culture. And so you'll find someone in the, in the existence somewhere that has your story. It's just a matter of finding them and putting that in front of the person. And you, but you, you, you know that basically when you said, are they willing to do the work? Are they willing to listen? And that's what you can't do for them. Yeah, that's it. I don't think that there's, I mean, after that point, I think the more you push, the more, I mean, to, to each of own, I'm the type of person that I'm going to give you what you need. And then after that, I, I will only give so much, you know, I might just fall back entirely and not give any at all. But I think that once you give the necessary information, I mean, everybody knows the individual that they're trying to convince. So you kind of get an idea of, I think I could send this video. I think I could send this video. I think this one would be perfect for him. And you send all just the right ones. This is me and my cousin. So I send all just the right ones. I know his background. I know where he's from. I know what he's about. I know what music he listens to. I know all of what's necessary to change him. But he can't change himself. So I can't do it for him. And that's exactly what's going on. Is he's, it's very hard for him to understand. And I know where he's coming from. Because oh, yeah. my mom, which is his, uh, his mom is um, the sister. They are... I mean, I want to say some of the most liberal people you can find out there. I mean, my mom sent me to school. She told me racism is out there. You know, I got this story. I've been meaning to put it in my videos, but it, it ended up playing out where I remember I went to school one day. Well, I, I ended up developing a pack of friends who happened to be white. So I would always hear the rhetoric come from my mom, that white people were bad, this, that, and the third, and you gotta get up over them because they're, they're gonna take things from you and whatever else she could think of, she would push it on us. So I would go to school or whatever, you know, and I, the community I lived in happened to be an area where it was very diverse. So you had your little spread of, of white people and I made friends with everybody. So I'm cool with all the white kids or whatever. And as I'm kicking it with the white kids, I noticed, cause I'm from New York where there weren't very many white kids, so I'm starting to notice like, man, they real cool. They real cool. They don't have nothing, that, you know, all the traits and characteristics that everybody's been talking about. I'm not really seeing what they're talking about. So I remember going home to my mom, telling my mom like, you know, mom, I don't think there's racism anymore. It was, bro, Kyle, it was just like this. I was like, mom, I don't think there's racism anymore. I really don't think it exists. Like I'm with my white friends. She's like, nope. Mark, no, that's not it. That's not how you need to think. She was like, it is out there. You just don't see it. You got to open those eyes. You got to, and she will push this stuff. And I would just, I get back out there and I'm, you know, back out chopping it up with the same white friends. And I'm like, you know, like, man, I can't really understand where she's coming from with her angles. And that's mom Dukes. Everybody listening to mom Dukes. And I'm looking at my boys and I'm just like, man, this is one of those things where it's really not making sense. I'm going to have to think for myself. And then it started jumping off. Different things started to take place. So what's crazy about it is you had that whole Nick Cannon drama and, you know, all that information that he was diving into about the, the Caucasus Mountains and things like that. Believe it or not, that was the experience that I ended up going into after I started to push away the rhetoric my mom was talking to. My mom talked all this, you know, white people this, white people that. And ended up falling into the hands of, I believe they call either three percenters or five percenters. Mm -hmm. Five percenters. You know, the the part of the Hebrew Israelites, and they, they preach a lot of that stuff, and they go into like the dollar bill and all of this stuff, where it gets really to the point where the, the most that you're taking from it is that they are pushing black people up and pushing everyone else down. It's the most I could really digest from what they were trying to push out. And that was making so much sense to me. And then over time, 
I started to learn and understand like, man, this is, this is not the real thing. This is not the real thing. I saw a conservative, I was like, what's up with that conservative movement? So I started looking in that direction and everything just blossomed. The, the light just shined on me. I felt like a new person and all that rhetoric, my mom's rhetoric, it was all put away. And I would just think for myself without taking anyone else's knowledge. It was about what information I can gather, what I can look up, and that was more so of what I, you know, was able to bring to the table to become who I am today. Yeah, this conversation is getting pretty deep, man. You're, you're throwing me back to college days, man. And uh, one thing you nailed on that particular point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was I was a, I was I was out there, man. I was I was one of those guys back in college, man. I was mm-hmm. out, I was out of control, dude. Seriously. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you off camera some some stories. Um, <laughs> um, so anyway, but yeah, but the, the point why I, I took away from that point there was that you would say that what liberals understand, I love how you put blue team, red team. I love that. I might steal that and give you a little credit. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. I love, I love you. I love you. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it, man. It's great. Especially since I'm so amped up for sports anyway. So um, mm-hmm. anyway, uh, but yeah, but we get it though. They don't understand that people on the blue team, as you would say, don't understand that we get it we look we were there we get it and all that stuff you just mentioned we get it i I preached it right and um but it was it's the point when i couldn't and i get into myself a little bit but it it relates to what you're saying so i'm not just talking about myself where i had a biblical framework where i felt that the bible i know is is the word of god and truth whatever but then the other side it has this humanistic secular side of it that you mentioned before that would not mix and on this side, no one agreed. They will tell you this, within that little uh, community, the Afrocentric community, Nubian, Egyptology, all that stuff in there mixed in, none of them really agree with each other, right? <laughs> the, only, the, the, the bonding side of that is that they don't like white people overall. I mean, not that they are, not that they, um, are outwardly hateful, they just say, you know, we just, like you said, they push themselves up and everyone else down. But even within that little group, they don't agree with each other. So it's very confusing in this, in this, in this space, right? And so mm-hmm. once once 9 11 happened, 2011, my shirt here, when I walked away, I, I said, you know what? The Republicans were the ones talking about defending the country. These guys weren't. So that's how I got started. And I was like, then everything you said came, happened to me. Mm-hmm. That's how it is. I think what's crazy about it is this is where we end up. And when I see like people like who haven't gotten here yet, that's, that's more so what I say. Like, I think it's like, bro, you just haven't. You haven't hit that conservative side of things yet, you know, whether it be for me, it was a lot of uh, also, you know, not only for my brother was where the, the root of me changing came from, but it was also the simple fact that, you know, like I said, I left the drug game, uh, you know, got with my wife. I had kids and I started thinking about what was valuable to me. You know what I mean? Doing five, 10 years, missing out on my kid's life, jeopardizing their their future. Or should I just do away with the drug game and just, you know, do my thing, do the nine to five or whatever, and just, you know, whoop de whoop. It's, it's all good. So I decided to just do what I could do. I did away with the drug game and then I went ahead and started doing my nine to five thing. And that's that's really what hit me the hardest in in politics and, and all of this stuff was the simple fact that I, I was looking for my kids and their future. I was looking at my wife and her future and how our family would grow and what we would grow into. And it made so much sense to me to go more on the, the with the conservative values opposed to the liberal values. Because if you look at the two, one looks like it's out to not do the greatest for the kids. And then you have one that's actually looking like they're all for the kids, you know. So I had to go with the one that made the most sense. And it happened to be the red team. And that's that's really what pushed me on top of, you know, the videos that came in, helping me change it. And then in that way, I also had a big impact for my family. That was, it was only right. It's kind of like what I was just saying earlier. You end up at this position. You know, I see a lot of people, I'm like, you know, maybe not yet, maybe not yet, maybe the right thing. And just to kind of like seal it up right here, my wife. So I went a long time being a conservative and my wife was like, nothing. I mean, she was really in the middle or wherever you want to categorize it. She didn't really side with anybody. But what it took was something like the whole C-19 deal. Once that came up, 
that was the influence that actually caused her to start to think. So you're going to get hit. You know, the, the blue team messed up so many times, Kyle. They mess up so many times. Is Before you know it, they bound to mess up with that person that had the full belief in them and what they were doing. They bound to mess up with that person and they start thinking for themselves. And then, boom, they messed up because we know we don't change. We don't change from blue. I mean, I'm sorry. We don't change from red to blue. Right. We know we all change from blue to red, you know? So that's my whole thing. That's that's my whole thing. It's, it's bound to hit you in some way, shape, or form. It wasn't videos for my wife. I watched videos every day, and my wife didn't take it and say, oh, let me start thinking for myself, and let me start doing what you... It took... Y'all start messing with her kid's school. Y'all start messing with her job, and then she, she's got some issues. So she starts thinking for herself, like, what's going on with this? Why am I having to do this? Why am I having to go this route? And I said, you know, it's good that you have me right there on your your side because I can now steer you in the right direction. And this is what you need to, need to know. And instantly she started to think for herself and now she's on the red team. She's on the red team. It wasn't videos. It wasn't videos. It's, that's the point that I'm trying to make. It happened to be a life experience, something that the blue team you start messing with wifey's kids, me, my kids too. And I lost my job in the whole um, C-19 situation. I lost my job. And um, that was all impacted her, which pushed her to think for herself, which pushed her to be where she is now, which is the full red team supporter. They made that mistake. Blue team made that mistake. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a lot to unpack there too. This can't be our last video, man, because actually this may be my last video of all time because I did, after what she just said, there's nothing for me to say anymore. I may yeah. just say on Facebook, I might just say, check out this video. Check out, just check out what conservative <laughs> guys. I'm serious, man. I, I had a, I literally said something about uh, six months ago prior to all this stuff. I said, at some point in time, the left is going to come for something that you care about. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it right there. That's exactly how it needs to be put. That's exactly how it needs to be put. And people, I laughed think at, people laughed at me back then. I got I, I, mm -hmm. all my Facebook statuses. I put into a database automatically, so I can go back and anytime I can go back and almost old statuses and go back and look at it. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's facts, it's dude. Facts. Man, that was, I, I, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a question here for you. Um, by the way, that was brilliant, man. That was that was brilliant. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna throw a all question right. here real quickly concerning black conservatives. Now it's been said. Uh, other video that the black conservatives are going to be important enough to save this country. I, I said in the video, I think so because, you know, we are kind of outside the counterculture thing because we don't fit the boxes. What's your take on black conservatives and our role going forward in this whole counterculture, cancel culture society we live in now? So I think we as black people are actually going to be the main representatives when it comes down to the movement. I think we're gonna actually take the lead. And I say that because for the simple fact that, I mean, I didn't make this the way that it is, but there's a lot of white people who cannot speak up for themselves or speak on many topics that us as black people just roll all over. Be like, whatever, we'll, be, we'll, we'll talk all about it and put it all out there. It's nothing, you know what I mean? So that's, that's the whole thing is I feel like we are there to actually push in the same way I just described to you that I never really thought that I would be uh, a conservative. And I think that's part of how I'm moving and changing people. It's the same thing that's applying to black people. So when you see a black conservative, you already blown, you're already blown away. The simple fact that you're already seeing that. And in this day and age, we're seeing a lot of stuff we never seen before. And we're, we're having, we're making this change, you know, in a direction where it's more like, you know, if it's something we never seen before, we're willing to take the risk, right? We're like, man, you know, so black people are on the conservative movement. Let me try it out. I think with us, they're more likely to try it out because they're starting to wonder why are we even on it anyway? Whereas if you were white, they're like, oh, well, you've been on that movement for the last so many years. That's nothing to us for you to try and change us to it. But for me to come out and be like, bro, look, I was liberal like two years ago. You gotta, you gotta know me for who I was as a liberal and wonder why am I on this conservative side of things? You really gotta wonder, you know what I mean? Y'all know me, I'm, I'm, I'm that dude from the streets. I was out there grinding, hustling, all about that life. 
and I end up turning around, relying on this, and this ends up panning out exactly the way that I, I planned it. You know what I mean? I thought I would gain success rolling with the conservative team because everything made so much more sense. You know, from A to Z, when you look at how the blue team rolls, you keep running into these bumps where you're like, these obstacles where you're like, well, how does this work if you're supposed to make this happen? But when you're on the conservative side of things, you see things and you can clearly see, okay, this is happening because of this. This is happening because of this. We throw statistics into play. We throw a lot of situations and things that help to impact how we think. Whereas, you know, how the blue team roles, they rely mainly on feelings, which is where they carry a more reckless way of thinking. If you were to ask me, I think that's where it more so comes from. Dude, man, you are killing it, dude. I got nothing. I got nothing. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very rarely speechless, man. I'm very rarely speechless, but that's I have I'm just gonna ask a question. But every, what you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, is precisely the deal there. I mean I mean what he's saying there is absolutely true. I mean, black conservatives, I mean, the thing is the the, the key point for me, the takeaway there is that dude, this is me. You know, the same guy that I was out in the street with you, you know, four years ago, that's me. You see me now. You know, don't you think in your in your in your, in your head how I got from here to now here? There's got to be a reason that should that should make people curious. And I think that's what the main takeaway for me is is living our lives and being authentic. If we can do that, let them know look, I'm still the same dude I was before, but I'm just focused from here to here now. I'm, my my priorities are focused, but I'm still the same person. It's just my values have shifted based on new information that I wasn't told before. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's what it is, and that's what it is. And that information is out there, which we've been taught on the blue side of things to not look for that information. They, you know, they tell us you're not a politician. Don't, don't, don't worry about that info. We got people who are already covering that. You don't need to think about it. You just need to vote over here. You vote on this side, and that's how it goes. You know, and that's that's what they've been trained to do. And they actually feel good about carrying those orders out, you know, because I've, I've sat down with guys, black in particular, same age group as me, and I've challenged them on researching different things. And when you tell me I'm gonna get to it later, bro, I already know you're not getting to it. You might think about it, but the chances of you being at the dinner table later that night and actually looking up information that I told you to go out and find, I feel like the chances are very low because I've never seen anybody after those words were given to me. I've never seen anybody actually come back to me and be like, bro, I actually looked up what you said and I, I figured it out. And that seems to be the hardest part. And it's not their will and, and, and thoughts that are saying no, they're following orders. They're following orders. Remember the, the blue team says, you guys aren't politicians. Everybody fits the status. The ball players play ball. You know the 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 um the army people in the army they do their thing. Everybody does their own thing, and you got to stay in your lane. And that's more so what they want to see. Don't dibble in pol politics. I knew amongst my people, I could never talk politics. There was nothing to talk about. They knew nothing about the statistics. They knew nothing about black on black crime. They knew nothing about anything that I was finding out online and, and building, you know, as far as information goes. And it kills me for some, I won't say all black people, because you, you know how it is. If you got a group of black people, it's very hard to get them to sway in a certain direction. You know what I mean? But if you get that individual, which you know is far more intellectual than some of the others out, you can sit that one guy down and be like, look, bro, let me chop it up with you real quick. Let me show you some videos. Let me show you, let me put you on to what you need to know. And you'll see that you'll possibly get more of a reaction out of dealing with black people one by one, opposed to dealing with the mass um, entirely, which that's cool. I, I'm not against pushing the information out in the mass um, to a mass group of people, but I do know in my experience, when I've sat down with maybe three guys Oh yeah, they would they would all three try to eat me up, you know, on the debate side of things. But when I'm dealing with one one on one, it seems that I could get that individual to think a little bit more than what I can get him to think of, you know, think to when there's other people in, in the equation and they start adding in their two cents and kind of throwing off their ways of thinking. If you saw that the the um there was a 
King Face, my son debate that went down in the studio, and you can see everything I just described take place because yeah, he's actually doing a debate, my son, in the midst of a lot of other people who are yeah. chiming in, putting in their two cents. And then, yeah, I give it to King Face because he was just handling them left and right. But yeah, it's always a situation when you're dealing with many opposed to dealing with just one individual because that one, usually, you could you get them to think. You know, black people can think. I think as a group, they work off that mob mentality and that tends to, like, them tends to mess them up. You know, out there on them blocks, we always be clicked up, eight deep, six deep. So it's hard to really share and, and express information when they're always in that mass and they're always in that group. So what you're saying essentially is that the Democrats, because of who they are, uh, with the sense of, um, like you said, groupthink, where you're a collective, you're not an individual. And that's something that I was listening to Jordan Peterson earlier today and Ben Shapiro about uh, uh, postmodernism. And it got way in the weeds. But <laughs> the key thing was, to your point, the mob mentality or you're in this, you can't think outside of your box. And so you raise an interesting point. That box also includes politics. They have, they have the people who are like in there, like Maxine Waters, who've been in there forever, because that's what they do. She's in her mm -hmm. lane, I'm in my lane. Mm -hmm. That's a really, I got to think about that. I think you're, I think you, you're onto something there. I think, I think that's really, really critical. And getting them separate from that is a really important piece. And that King Face video, we're working on something to, a third debate series. We're working on that one, but we're hard to frame that video together and debate because there's so much cussing in it. I gotta, I gotta edit it out. So, we're, so we're kind of that's been pushed out, pushed aside because of the COVID and everything. But, but we want to get into that too because that's something that's important, right? Getting people to themselves, so they can actually not have their buddies around to bounce off of, but to have the freedom to actually listen to you and actually say, hey, that does make sense. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, so what are your thoughts about the Uncle Tom movie that came out? Uh, you were, were, you, were you referenced in the, uh, in the uh, Larry Elder piece? No, I, I, I mean, everything I just, you know, everything I've kind of expressed is more so just kind of me and, and not really any pieces from anybody. The movie itself, kind of like what I was explaining a little earlier, I think, you know, I think the piece entirely was great. You know, the movie overall was perfect. I think what ended up being the biggest deal with the Uncle Tom movie is as a conservative, we need ammunition. Remember earlier in this interview, we talked about what's needed in order to change someone's way of thinking, in order to red pill them. What, what, what do we need in order to make that happen? So if you can use the Uncle Tom video, which in my opinion, that happens to be one of the best choices you could actually make for somebody really looking into the movement and considering, hey, what's really going on? Why do you guys support this movement and all what's going on? That movie was that to me. It's ammunition in my back pocket. I got videos, you know, because we, we go at this every day. We like politics. We do our thing on, on YouTube. We're into these videos. I'm sure you, if, if you ran into somebody, you would say to yourself, hey, look, I can see your background. I can see your style. Let me send you a King Face video. I already know this is what you need to go ahead and get red pilled. Let me shoot you a King Face video. So that's my whole thing. It's like the Uncle Tom movie, that's ammo. That is real, real ammo for when you really need to change somebody. Because that's what we all want to do. I would like to free all my brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? But in order to make that happen, I guess because of how the world works out, they can't just hear facts and give in. They have to hear it from all these different angles. They have to hear facts. They have to hear experiences like my channel. They have to hear what I went through. They have to see maybe someone in real life and all that has to apply in order to just make one small change. But when the change goes down, it's a wrap. They never go back. And once they start thinking for themselves, that's the best part of it. You know, that's like the fire. You just got it to let light and then the fire is off and, and, and burning and then you just let it burn. You just let it go. And that's that person off and running, obtaining and gaining knowledge on all of what's taking place in the world. And then slowly but surely, they're going to call you up like, yo, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm conservative now. I'm conservative now. That's 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 what I look to, you know, make happen with my videos, with my message, anything out there. You know what I mean? I've tried. I've tried a few times with um, a few people that I, I used to kick it with and stuff like that. And um, I haven't had much success. It's been very difficult. And, you know, I never really put them on to anything 
too abstract or complex. I'll give them real easy videos to digest. And it's still hard for some people to, you know, turn and use that way of thinking. I mean, they'll, they'll do math problems. They'll, they'll do, you know, comprehension and different things like that. They're, they're book smart, but they don't seem to be able to wrap their hands around thinking for themselves and looking at the television as the enemy instead of seeing it as this savior that's getting them to the next level, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want to thank you so much for your, for your time and uh, for this, for this chat and what you just said there about channel zero, I call it TV channel zero and the whole, <laughs> the, the whole thing about thinking for yourself, that is so, that's so very vital. And, um, but let me, before I give you my last question here, I, I want to just share with you something a little bit because I don't think I've ever said this on camera. And so the whole thing for me, and just to let you know this, just to your point, it's not really about videos all the time. That can be good, but it can be something as simple as watching a movie. And I'll tell you why I saw a movie. This is in my heyday, the, the Million Man March day, back in 90, whatever it was, 91, 92. And you know, I was Spike Me Down. I was, uh, you know, I was, you know, all that, you know. Um, but I saw the movie Get on the Bus. And in that scene, there's one small scene in that movie. And this is where it started. I think this is where it started for me. It's a scene on there where there's a conservative couple on there. And he says something about, well, they were, down, they were getting on him because he was a, a conservative. And he was like, well, at least I'm not something to the effect of, you know, on welfare, begging the white man for money, begging the white man for whatever. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I was like he's, he's right. And I'm like, but he's a Republican. I'm in, I'm, I'm, this, is a Spike, this is a Spike Lee film. I'm like, and it didn't have that, that was that never that stayed in my head for like years. It's still in my head, obviously. The second part was when uh, Clinton, maybe it was when Clinton was it Clinton? Yeah, when he bombed by mistake the embassy in like China, a Chinese embassy somewhere, in attack, and all the Demo all the Republicans were coming after were coming after um, Clinton. All of them. say Clinton, you did this. You know, you're you're um you're wagging the dog because the whole thing of Mike Lewinsky. And one person said this. He said. New Gingrich said, um, he's the president, stuff happens. You know, we, we need to back him. I'm like, what? <laughs> that was number two, right? And then the third one was 9-11, right? And that when the Democrats were blaming America for, for, our, for our messing up. And then I went looking for Democrat support and no one was there to help defend this country. I'm like, okay, hello, we have two buildings knocked down. My dad was on his way to the Pentagon that morning. You know, that got hit. We got a plane in Pennsylvania that went down. And you're trying to tell me that, so I was... Mm -hmm. I was almost, I was done. So then I went to the George W. Bush website, looked over my shoulder, and signed and hit the enter button to sign for like uh, to help out a um, interest group, whatever, whatever. And that was number three. And the fourth one was when I showed up and no one called me. It, it was it was good. It was nothing but love. At my first conservative meeting, by myself, all white people <laughs> in the South. Mm -hmm. I just went because I was I was scared for this country. I didn't care. I didn't care. You know whatever. And that to me was my final transformation. And then I learned about everything else we talked about, the KKK and so forth. So just yeah. the, some encouragement for people. Every little bit helps. Even those one views you got, those couple months you got, you thought no one was looking, that one video was someone who saw it, that could be their red pill for like two years down the road, or maybe they're there, maybe they're there now. So. Yes, facts. Nothing but facts. So, so let, me, let me ask you my last question here. Uh, what makes you the most excited about your channel, yourself, life, this country, or anything you want to talk about going forward? Um, overall, it's just it's just the feeling of freedom. It's just the feeling of freedom. I mean, I'm a, like I said, it's it's a night and day thing, you know. For anybody who has, for anybody who has gone from the blue side to the red side, you you know, I've never had the experience of winning a million dollars or obtaining a million dollars in one shot. But I mean, if you could, if you ask me to compare it to something extravagant, I mean, that's where I'm reaching. That's really where I'm reaching because it's, it's not, I feel rich. I feel rich with no money in my pocket. I feel mentally richer than where I was before because the knowledge gets me so far. You know what I mean? When I walk around and I know how many deaths occurred from police brutality on uh, black people in 2019, I say, what's up to the cop? You know, it gives me an energy that I've never had before. And that energy and mentality 
is coming from the knowledge. The knowledge is pushing me to be who I am. And it's also triggering different sides of myself, which I've never really got into in the past, where whatever I don't know, I just look it up. You know, once upon a time, I would leave off with Google right in my back pocket. I would leave off where the question ends. And I'd be like, oh, well, you know, instead of going ahead and researching that information, right after I'm done asking a question, I'm like, man, I'll figure it out later. I'll just, you know, whatever. I'll just worry with something else. Turn on Love and Hip Hop or some kind of, you know, program on a television. Whereas now I push away the TV. I push away a lot of the rap music. And I'm out here learning. I'm reading different articles. I'm obtaining knowledge from different avenues, different areas in order to change who I am as a person. Because I'm learning that the more knowledge I obtain, the better of a person I actually am. Not only to my kids, my family, my ways of thinking are more sharper, it's more keen. When I walk the streets, I see so many things from a conservative mind, you know, looking in. And you could see some of the actions that take place, you know, as you're in public. And you're like, man, I bet a million dollars, that's a that's a liberal. And sometimes you can see different situations. And you're like, man, I bet a million dollars, that's a conservative. You just know based on certain experiences going on in life. And then especially nowadays with the whole um, C-19 deal and stuff like that, you're having, you know, people who are wearing and not wearing and stuff like that. You're, you're really starting to really decipher and tell who's who, you know, and what's going on. And that's, that's my biggest thing. You know, my channel has been nothing but an uplifting experience to me. And Kyle, when I hit that comment section to everybody out there that leaves me those comments, that means a lot to me. I show my wife, I'm like, how do you expect me to feel bad? You know, we'll even get in little fights or whatever. And I'm like, man, I just can't be mad at you right now. Look at this comment right here. This person's talking about how much they love my channel so much. They're loving I'm speaking truth. They're loving all the stuff I'm presenting. And that's, that's what really pushes me all the time, you know what I mean? I've been through a lot of tight scenarios, even stressful scenarios that I've actually thought about the goodness that's coming from my channel and I just triumph like right through it. I just triumph right through it. Whatever stressful is taking place, I had some issues go down with my car or whatever, you know, I, I acknowledge that it's something that I need to handle and take care of, but it's not a completely downside that takes over me. It's more like that downside comes and I think about my channel, whoop, whoop, I start, you know, bubbling right back up and I'm ready to go. I'm like, look, we can handle this. If anything, I just go make this happen, make some moves here, get some money here, fix the car. I'm back on the grind doing videos, you know? So that's what it's doing to me on a day-to-day -day basis. Having a channel is pushing me to new levels in life that my wife's never seen before. My kids have never seen before. I'm high energy and very interactive with anybody and everybody about everything, worldly issues and things like that. And it's, it's because I have a better understanding of white people, Spanish people, Indian people, and that's after you obtain knowledge. When the knowledge is there, you will now you know think differently and that's part of the red pill. And that's what I would hope I could push on everybody and anybody that's willing to take in the information that I'm given. That is absolutely wonderful. I, I just, I can't say how proud I am to hear, proud of you. I, I, I never met you, but I'm still proud of you. And uh, 20,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers is, is, is a, a huge accomplishment. It's a lot of work and don't, you know, that's something that I know how hard that what you did is. And you have only bigger places to go. And uh, for those who are trying to start a channel, just keep grinding, guys. Even if it's one view a day. That's still mm -hmm. one view. That's still mm -hmm. one view that no one has seen before because it's you. You are unique. You are the only person in the world like you. So you're the only person that can say what you can say. So every view counts. And um, I'll say one more thing about the people, the subscribers. The we get more positive comments than we get any negative comments. Facts. Facts. Yep. And some of them, I know you get way more than I do, but there are some of them are really just makes you want to just like just thank, get on your knees and just thank God. You know that 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 <laughs> that, that you're. Because you put so much time in the videos, you plan it, you have to do all this stuff, and and yeah. think that someone appreciates you to, to click the subscribe button. <laughs> to me, I'm honored by that. So, anyway, you guys must subscribe to this guy's channel. It's um. And by the way, I, I don't want to get it wrong. So, conservative guy, tell everyone how they can follow you, how they can support you, how they can plug into you. If you want to find me, conservative guy, type in conservative, and then when you type in guy, it's capital G U Y, no space. So conservative guy, and I'll instantly pop up. Once upon a time, I wasn't 
in the algorithm. But nowadays, based on what a lot of people have told me, you could easily find me just by typing in conservative guy. I'm also on Instagram, so you could catch me on my IG. Um, feel free to follow me there. I try to keep you know in tune with what's going on. Most of what's on my Instagram is more pertained to what's happening you know, throughout the community. You'll see a lot of videos related to some of the violence that's taking place, such as the protests and things like that. So that's more of what I like to elaborate on when it comes down to the IG. And then when you touch base with me on YouTube, that's where you see me more in the flesh and you see me you know, delivering my message. Fantastic. And there's some the titling here at the bottom. I'll add that. And also in the description, you can just click on the links below. We'll have all that to him as well. So conservative guy, I want to say this has been a wonderful experience. I hope this is not the last time we can do this. If you want me to come on your channel, I'll be more than happy to come on. If you want to do this again, another forum, I'll be, I just want to keep this engagement going because I have so much more I could talk to you about in terms of the algorithm, in terms of just digging deeper into some of these high level concepts of post, <laughs> post, um, uh, whatever I said before, <laughs> I can't think. Anyway, I, I just would absolutely love to do that with you. With you. Cool. All right. Anytime, anytime, you know what I get. So what I have going on, just so the people out there know, I have my hands kind of really wrapped around uh, this YouTube thing because I'm getting such a positive, getting such positive feedback from the people. I'm looking to actually push um, my channel to, to that level where I'm actually having a weekly show. And on top of a weekly show, I would like to bring in guests. And most definitely, I would like to bring you in Kyle, to have you come in and touch base with my audience members. And hopefully, you know, the same way people gravitated to me after I uh, was featured on someone's show, I would like to do the same for you. You know, even if it helps you jump up 500 followers, that's that's all love, you know, and we need to really come together and kind of mix communities because there's a lot of people that know you that don't know me and a lot of people that know me and don't know you. So once we can intertwine the two, you know, that's something I will always look to do in order to push all my conservative brothers up and, you know, bring out to, to, to a point on your platform where you, you feel very good about shooting out your message because it's great when you shoot out your message and you air it out to 10 people. But man, it feels amazing when you're racking up big numbers on views and you're getting a lot of positive comments. I mean, I'm, sometimes I see like, 30 positive comments before I come across a negative one. And what is that negative one to me after I just ran through 30 of these great ones? And then I go ahead and right after the negative one, I roll right into another positive one and more positive ones. So that's that's definitely what I would like to see ha get or happen to all of my conservative brothers, especially those running YouTube channels, trying to make a difference such as yourself, you know? Great, man. I would love that. That's awesome. I'm glad to see your channel growing. I can't wait to see you in a year from now. It's going to be awesome to see it going. And so um, is there anything else you had for me before I, before I close this out? No, nah, that's really it. Again, I want to thank you so much for having me come on. You know, it's definitely great to, to come on someone else's platform and really share my message. And, you know, I know, like I just said, some of your followers don't follow me. So hopefully they gravitate to, to the message that I'm sending out. And then, you know, we could both just fill them in with nothing but facts and knowledge and get them all the, you know, possibly change and persuade someone else. Get everybody on the red team, you know. Amen. Amen to that. All right. Well, again, thank you again so much for this. And uh, I look forward to it. And God bless you and your family. And for everybody in the audience, please follow Conservative Guy. He's got a great channel. I meant to say this in the interview before, but... His videos are topical and they're great. They're, he, like you say, he gives the, the, the story side to it and there's the music side to it. It's wonderfully blended in. It's just good stuff. And he says stuff that's really, really poignant to get you thinking, as you can see from this interview. So with that, everybody, thank you so much for coming to the Conservative Take. And if you like what you see on this channel where you take culture, TV, and movies, and politics, and stuff like this, and filter your rights, please click the like and subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future content. As always, please check out some content that we have right here.